Atma Namaste. Let us start with our uh, <clears throat> divine blessings to the Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, Guru, Master, Chokhok Sri, Maha Guruji, Miling, all the great, great ones, Holy Gurus, Holy Masters, Saints, Archangels, Holy Angels, Spiritual Helpers, all invisible helpers, Lords of Karma, Buddha Kwanin, Buddha Shakyamuni, all Bodhisattvas, all beings of light, our divine self and higher soul. We humbly invoke for your divine blessings, divine light, divine love and divine power, for divine peace, divine illumination, enlightenment, for divine grace, divine guidance, divine help, divine healing, divine support, divine protection, protection of ourselves, our loved ones, our possessions, belongings, our dreams, desires, wishes, and goals. Thank you for your miraculous healings on all levels. Thank you for blessing us with prosperity, abundance, growth, success, progress. Thank you for bringing us all together, God, and evolving together, hand in hand. Thank you for all the divine gifts you have given us on all levels, through time and space, all the blessings, all the healings, all the gifts, the gift of life, the gift of breathing, the gift of seeing, the gift of touching, feeling, the gift of smelling, hearing. Thank you, God, for everything. We are absolutely blessed, God, for all that you have given to us. Thank you for keeping our lives in divine order, for self-mastery, soul mastery, for neutralization of all our negative karmas of the past, present, or future. Thank you for wholesome relations with everyone, harmonious, loving, compassionate relation with everyone on all levels. Thank you for a wholesome, healed life. Thank you in full faith. So be it, so be it, so it is. Om, Amen, Amin, Tathastu. Let us remind ourselves that we are not the body. We are actually a speck of God. The speck of God is within our body. And that speck of God is called the soul. So let us do the soul affirmations to remember that God is within us and we are empowered by God. I am that I am. I am not the body. I am not the emotions. I am not the thoughts. I am not the mind. I am the soul. I am a spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love and divine power. I am in complete and permanent control over my body, my emotions and my thoughts. So be it. I am super receptive, super conductive and super, super grateful to the divine energies, divine blessings and divine healings coming from God, passing through the Guru and enfolding us. Thank you in full faith. With lots of gratitude, lots of respect and lots of love, we thank you. So be it. Oh.
visualize all negative thoughts, negative emotions, negative programs, self-limitation energies being flushed out from your aura, your chakras. Like gray clouds, smoky clouds, it is just flushing out from the aura. And inhale the divine energy is pouring down from heaven as we have chanted Aum. Let us also chant Aum. So Aum brings down the divine energies. So inhale all those and flush out all the negatives. Aum. Aum. Inhale the divine blessings. Exhale all that is negative within you. Inhale the healing energies of God. Exhale all your diseases and toxic energies. Whatever it is. Inhale God's beautiful healing energies. And exhale all your problems, your weaknesses. So when we chant Om, what it does is it raises our vibrations. Of course, it flushes out the negative, but it raises our vibrations. When we chant, it pulls, our, pulls us up. Okay. When we chant Aum, divine energy pours down from heaven, flushing out all the negatives and it fills up into every cell of our body. So that divine energy fills up into every cell of our body. Re rejuvenating our body with divine power. Okay. So <clears throat> let us now forgive uh, ourselves for all the mistakes that we have done in our lives uh, so that we get, we are free from all inhibitions, all uh, guilt, all, you know, mm, self uh, limiting factors. So when we do mistakes unconsciously in our subconscious mind, there are there are factors which become which limit us because we know we have done something wrong. Maybe knowingly, maybe unknowingly. So you know what happens is our soul starts cracking, starts fragmenting. Every negative thing that we do, it creates a scar on the soul. So when we forgive ourselves that, yes, it is okay. I am a human being. I can do mistakes. Otherwise, I would have become God. So then what happens is the divine energy which pours down starts healing those scars, those cracks, holes, those, uh, you know, all those stigmas that are there. Those are all removed. So you start becoming whole. You start becoming complete. All the fragments get dissolved and disintegrated. Okay, so it's very, very important for us to do a self-forgiveness with our, ourselves, accepting ourselves for the way we are, for what we are. When I think about each of you, when I accept myself the way I am, it will be easy for me to accept everyone else the way they are. So then when we can accept everyone as they are, automatically our relationships will be healed. All relationships problems occur because we cannot accept the other person as they are. Whatever our expectation is, I want him to be like this. I want him to change. I want, why do you want? Who are you to want that? God may say, I want my child to be like this. Who are you to want? You can want what you want to be. But that soul has the liberty to be what he is. Yes, as our children, as our kids, we may guide them and we may teach them, give them good ethics, morals, uh, teach, give exposure of all the goodness that is there, of course, to our spouse also. But ultimately, it depends on the soul. What is the development of the soul? What is the purity of the soul? What is the intention of the soul? Depending on that, that soul will transform as it wants. We can't ever force the other soul to change. 
we might inspire, we might motivate, but we cannot thrust it on them. This is the greatest, biggest mistake that we do. We want others to be the way we perceive or the way we expect. Remember, every soul, as per its own development, it sees things like that. Because every soul, a class one child, will see things in a certain way. A newborn baby will see things, or a one-year-old baby or six-month-old baby. You see, the baby, even if the baby gets hurt, falls down, somebody scolds, the baby cries for a little while, again, the baby is happy. That is what the baby can see. As per the development of the baby, the baby sees happiness in everything. Whereas an adult, you will see maybe sees everything negative. No matter, even if you give a, you know, a stranger uh, comes and helps, uh, you know, the, the, this person and the person says, oh, why are you giving me a seat in the bus? There must be some intention. That is what he thinks. So his perception, the soul's development is such that he sees things like that. And the way he sees things, the way he perceives things, that is how the way he acts, reacts, or the deeds that he does, the thoughts that he thinks, the words that he speaks is as per the development of the soul. We cannot pull up a class one child to class 12 immediately. So it is foolish to expect others to be like you. Everybody's rate of growth is not the same. Maybe your soul's development is rapid because you are into spirituality. What happens the moment you are into spirituality? Your soul develops very fast. Lightning speed, it starts growing. Because God wants to empower you with his uh, you know, powers. Why? Because God wants you to be his hands, to work for him, for the divine plan, to serve humanity. We were not born just to go to school, get married, uh, bear babies, bring them up and die. That animals are doing. Why are we different from animals? Because we were born with a special purpose. And that purpose only who knows, God knows, and our soul, which is the speck of God, which is within us, only that soul knows why we were born. What is the speciality for which we were born? What are we supposed to do in this lifetime? So if you really tune in to the God within you, you will know what you're supposed to do, what speciality you were born for. And when that happens, your life purpose is fulfilled. Then you will have the real contentment, the real peace. People run after money. People run after, um, you know, popularity, fame, name, uh, prosperity, riches, everything. They forget to run after peace. That is the biggest treasure in the world. I'll tell you what happened with me, my life. You know, <clears throat> Long back, I think about 13 years back, or maybe 14 years back, yes, maybe 14, yeah, 14 years back, while we were living in Bombay, me and my children, and uh, uh, two years before that, my husband had died, so only three of us were there. So, you know, I came out of the trauma and the shock and all those things, and then I thought the children need a break. So, we, uh, I thought, let me take them somewhere in the Himalayas. And then we traveled to Dehradun, Masuri, Haridwar, and Rishikesh. So I was there with the two kids. My son was uh, then uh, around two years. Yeah, sorry, it is 15 years back. So my son was two years and my daughter was then four years old. And we had our uh, full-time maid. I had uh, taken her also. And we came to Dehradun, uh, Haridwar, Rishikesh. And when we finished this tour, I said, let's go a little higher up. And we went to Deva Praya. When we went to Deva Praya, we stayed in the PWD bungalow, which is just above the confluence of Alok Nanda and Bhagirathi River. So from the top, you can see both the rivers merging with each other and actually River Ganga starting from there. The name Ganga comes from the confluence of that, those two rivers. So when we reached there and we put up there, um, that night was a full moon night. And in India, as we call it, Lakshmi Purnima, the full moon of the goddess of prosperity and abundance. So this PWD bungalow was so beautiful. It was on a tabletop. At the edge of the table, down, if you look, you could see the confluence and the river Ganga stuff. 
so and the, it was a british bungalow so you know huge rooms with fireplaces carpeted and etc so children went off to sleep the maid servant also went off to sleep i came out and i took a chair i sat at the edge of the table top and i was just looking out i could see on the other side in the mountains there were small little specks of light maybe houses or temples and the sky was filled with you know um, the moonlight and the silvery white water was sparkling absolutely and at the confluence there is also a temple so that temple over there it was lit up and there were some rituals going on so i could hear the bells ringing and i was totally you know mer- i had merged myself with nature it was so peace it was so peaceful so calm so serene i just sat there put up a you know i played a very soft uh, instrumental music and i was just enjoying that peace and suddenly after a while i heard bells ringing in many uh, it seems to be temples you know far away so when all so many bells started ringing i said what happened and i looked at my watch and i saw it was 3 o'clock in the morning i did not realize the whole night had passed in that pure serenity and peace that speck of that moment i realized what am i doing with my life okay i am in a very influential uh, in a very uh, uh, you know in my career i have achieved a lot in other areas of life i have achieved a lot but i am in a rat race no matter what i achieve whether it is status money popularity still i am running in a rat race and what is this rat race giving me it's giving me money it's giving me name it's giving me fame but am i really having the inner treasures of life am i really having the internal peace the contentment the bliss no then what am i running for what am i really achieving so then i realized and i decided you know from now on i'm going to run after peace i'm going to leave all this if i run after peace and i will run after my own passion if i run after my passion my dreams my desires and peace mainly everything else will run after me that was the point of time when i decided that i will quit my job and i will uh, you know i will take care of kids full time and i will take care of my life also full time so i went back i put my papers down and subsequently in 3 4 months time whatever i uh, got released from everything shifted to the himalaya set up uh, my meditation yoga center the ashram out there and i was pursuing uh, spirituality i was serving humanity everywhere out there healing people giving other services to people there was so much of contentment so much of peace so much of uh, you know fulfillment in my life that i was doing something out of my life and it did not stop money flowing into my life it did not stop prosperity flowing into my life or abundance flowing into my life when you do work for god god works for you remember god will work harder than you if you are working for god we forget to realize this we think that oh we are so insecure human beings are so insecure that we feel oh if i am not going to office every day i will not be able to feed my children oh if i am not earning this much in this way then you know i will be poor etc etc all these are just created in our mind insecurities and all these are created in our mind if you can surrender completely to the work of god no matter how maybe you are serving yes did i not take responsibility of my children of course i brought them up in such a good way with comfort with the best of education with the best of facilities with everything best so that did not hinder it did not hinder us from having the best of life in any way whether i was going uh, you know i was being invited abroad for different uh, retreats and different uh, spiritual retreats or uh, different conferences and co- conventions whether i was uh, you know traveling all over india or maybe abroad everything was happening in the best 
the thing is you need to be in touch with your own god the god within you your own soul through the soul be in touch with the supreme god surrender yourself that god you guide me what i what was i born for let me do that we are conditioned by our parents by our families by our relatives by the environment by the society that you should do this you should not do that you should be this you should not be that you should become a you know painter or you should become a corporate lady or you should forget about those just listen to god god will give you the right guidance take you through the path smooth and easy you will see your life is so wholesome so fulfilled so contented there's so much of peace joy happiness you attract so many good things in your life so many good people in your life so many healthy relations healthy wholesome you know activities but you have to have the will power positivity and the courage to take that step okay so all these are possible when you accept yourself the way you are the connection with your inner self has to be strong when the connection with your inner self is strong the connection with everyone else will be strong because the inner self is none other than god himself then you will see all your relations will work well you do not need to change others they will change when your energy changes when your aura changes all the people who are unwanted who cannot harmonize with your energy will just flush out from your life they will not be there you will have if you are on vibration number 7 you will see you are attracting people and relations situations and experiences of that vibration if you are at minus 7 you will attract all the situations in your life which is minus 7 even though you are put to test you will see you will come out a winner very easily smoothly without any hurdle without any tension without any worry that is why it is important for us to be in touch with our the god within us with our own selves okay so uh, what we will do is i will share the screen we will do the forgiveness prayer uh, after this but let me share the screen first we will we'll do something very interesting it's of course my favorite topic i guess people you know what it is let's start sorry Okay, so let's see what is there. Look at these personalities. You know most of them. Think, who are they, and why are they what they are? Were they born extraordinary? Were they? Did they get all extraordinary situations or? um conditions in their life not everyone any of them if you see they have grown out of out of nothing or out of something to something great so excellence is never an accident if you aspire to be excellent if you aspire to go to the top whatever in whatever field it doesn't matter what field it is if it is in finance in finance if it is in uh, you know sports sports if it is in music music no matter in which area which field what whatever your life path is in that path you should be on the top 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 that is the you know unspoken vow we take when we become arhatic yogi practitioners that is a unspoken vow that we take that no matter what we do we are going to be the best nothing less than the best that is what we were born for to express the speciality the uniqueness that we have within us 7.8 billion people on this earth 
none of them is exactly the same like you you are completely different from all the others 7.79999 7, whatever billion people so you have to be aware of that conscious of that and you have to excel in what you are what you were born for so excellence it was never an accident it is the result of what sincere efforts every one of these people have had sincere efforts in their life they have had skillful execution and the vision to see obstacles as opportunities so most of the failures happen when you see obstacles at obstacles and you give in oh god the road is closed then i can't go today chalo let's go back oh god there is such a problem has come so i will not be able to you know resolve the resolve it the moment you give in you have lost an opportunity because every time a problem comes every time any challenge comes that challenge comes as a disguise bringing a big opportunity behind it if you can overcome that obstacle if you can remove that blockage there is a huge opportunity waiting behind that that is what you need to have the vision that is the third eye that is the work of the third eye the inner eye the inner wisdom if you have that inner wisdom no problem is problem no obstacle is obstacle no challenge is challenge because we were born to just grow and move and excel and be a unique personality like all of these would you not like your picture also to be here that everybody is thrilled and inspired by your achievements by your contribution to the world that's where we need to reach that's what we were born for and you can be empowered only by god you like giving you an example even if there is a heart blockage we run to we feel the doctor is the only savior we run to a doctor because we feel the doctor is the savior but subconsciously we can't even trust that doctor though we feel he is the savior we go for a second opinion see how much of uh, insecurity is there within us how much of doubt there is within us we can't even trust the savior who we are thinking will save my life we can't even trust them we are looking for a second opinion when you are in a big legal problem you take the second opinion from a second lawyer the one who th you think will rescue you from this problem you can't even trust that then how can you trust god how would you ever realize when would you ever realize that that is the only trustworthy place if you trust closing your eyes blindly everything will be resolved in your life that is where we fall that is where we cannot reach the higher vibrations that is where we fall down that is where we fail that is the real failure not getting a job or not being first in class or not getting you know what i am desiring is not a failure it is the failure when we fail to realize who is right who is wrong what is to be trusted who is to be trusted who is not to be trusted what is real in my life and what is just superficial glamour in my life that is that is where success and failure lies so why do we come to earth now let's ask ourselves why have we come to earth what has brought us to earth i will explain in a very very simple way when you go to school you go initially you get admission when you get admission suppose this is the school you got ad admission in nursery so you go there you have so many friends you are meeting them having good and bad times together and you are learning lessons and a b c d e and whatever and then you have certain exams tests you pass and when you pass then you are promoted to the next standard maybe standard 
Then gradually you get promotion, promotion, standard six, standard 10, and finally you graduate. When you graduate, you leave the school and you are out of the school. No more going back to the school. Then you go to a higher, you go to college, right? So the same thing happens to all of us when we are born. Mother Earth is the school for every soul. So every soul take birth, takes birth in a body to come to Mother Earth. So every soul is in different classes or different grades. Maybe one soul, which is a baby soul, the soul has just started taking birth, is in nursery. A soul which has already taken birth in 10 lifetimes in 10 bodies, maybe will be in standard one. A soul which has taken birth 100 times already, is a matured soul, will take birth in standard 10. So each of us are studying in different grades. So each of our books and lessons are different. Maybe one person is learning to be patient. The lesson of life for which he has come to earth, one of the lessons is patience. Whereas in school you study history, geography, mathematics, these are different subjects. So you learn different subjects in this lifetime. So you are learning patience, tolerance, honesty, kindness, love, um, moderation or balance. So all these things, each of us have come to learn different subjects. Whichever soul is studying in 10th standard, the lessons will be harder or the lessons will be on a higher level. The souls, sorry, which, is, which are studying in nursery, the lessons will be different. So for each of us, our tests are different. Our question papers are different. Whatever we have to write, the answer sheet will be different. We cannot do cheating from each other. Okay, from the experience, we can pick up some learning, but the answer will not be the same. So what is the question paper? The question paper is basically the problems that are put forward, the challenges that come to our life. When we are facing those challenges and resolving and you know overcoming those, we have answered our question papers. We have answered in our answer sheets. And when you come out clean, you have passed the test. When you pass out from standard one, and suppose you have gone to standard six, you are never sent back to standard one, right? When you have graduated from different grades, you're not put back in different that those previous grades. So similarly, if you have already passed out certain challenges, certain problems, you've already resolved, it will not be repeated in your life. You will have newer problems, newer challenges. And suppose there is a repetition of the same thing. A person marrying Elizabeth Taylor, eight times marriage. Every time she's marrying some problems, she comes out of it again tries another time. So when a lesson is being repeated, that means that soul has not yet learned the lesson. That is why it's being repeated. If you fail in mathematics, standard one, you don't get promotion. Again, you fail. Again, you don't get promotion. Again, you have to study, right? Same thing happens to the soul. If you fail to learn the lesson, we think that, okay, if this marriage feels, I will avoid, I will divorce and I will get a new one. So that things will work out. No, if you have not learned the lesson in your first marriage, in the eighth marriage also, you have not. It will go on repeating in your life. So the wise thing, the inner eye, the wise thing, the intelligent thing is to sit back and think, what is this problem time trying to teach me? What is this challenge? What lesson am I supposed to learn from this? The moment you realize, oh, oh, that means that my child is so naughty because I have to learn the lesson of patience. The moment you realize half of your problem is gone, you have got already 50% score in your, you know, in your exam. 50 marks is already given. The rest 50, you have to work it out. You have to actually be patient in reality. And the moment you are patient and you see that, okay, I'm not getting perturbed with my child's naughtiness, you will see that the child will calm down. 
Otherwise, you will see wherever you are going, people are bothering you. The same thing you will face everywhere, in every situation, in every place that you go. So it is intelligent and wise to sit back, meditate with you, get in touch with your own God within you, the soul, and think, what am I supposed to learn from this? The moment you realize what you are supposed to learn, as I said, your lesson, half of the lesson is over. You are wise then to resolve it easily. Remember, in every school, in, if, in every institution, in every board, whether it is ICSC, CESC, CBSC, whatever, the question paper is created as per the answer. The answer is already in the book. Based on the answers, afterwards the question paper is made. In our life, the solutions are already created in, in advance. Based on the solutions, the problems are given to us. So the solutions already exist. We have to be matured to tap into that book, read that book, understand that book. But what is the answer? The moment you know the answer, because it's already there with you. That is why the question paper was given to you. That is why the problem was submitted to you. The solution is already there. We forget to look into the solution. But what we do, we focus into the problem. Oh my God, I don't have money. Oh my God, this problem has come. Oh my God, there is no bus. Oh my God. You are focusing into the problem, the question paper. You are forgetting to focus into what the answer will be. So when you shift your attention from the question to the answer, you will know the answer. That is what we were born for, right? Okay, so now comes my favorite, karma. What is karma? Karma means deeds. What are the deeds? The deeds are, one side of the image is day, one side is night. So one is positive thoughts, negative thoughts. Positive words, negative words. Positive action, negative action. Just these three are enough to create karma. So either you create positive karma or negative karma. Positive deeds or negative deeds. How do you do it? How do you create? With positive thoughts, positive words, and positive action. So it is just like a reflection. When you look into your image in the water of a lake, you will see the exact same reflection. So if you do, if you have a positive thought, you will, if you give out, if you think of positive things, you will attract positive results. If you give out positive words, you will attract positive results. If you do some positive action, it will give you positive results. As simple as that. We complicate it. It is actually very simple. And it is a part of life. We are already used to it. Only thing is we fail to realize it. So the law of karma is a law of reflection. It reflects. Right? The law of cause. This is the second law of karma. The law of cause and effect. If you have papaya seeds, you are planting papaya seeds, it will give only papaya fruits. When you see the fruits, you know this is the effect. The cause was planting a papaya seed. So the effect will, the cause will be hidden within the effect. The effect will come out of the cause. So suppose I plant a papaya seed, a mango seed and an apple seed on the same day. Suppose the papaya seeds were rotten or the papaya seed is rotten, but the mango and the uh, apple are good seeds. So then what will happen? The papaya tree grows up within six months and starts giving fruits. The mango maybe grows up and after a year it starts giving fruits. Hypothetically, the apple grows up and it starts giving seeds after three years. Now, if you consider, try to understand, it's a very deep but uh, interesting you know, concept. Try to understand if one lifetime of yours means one year of this plant. So the seeds that are planted and the fruits come out within six months means in one lifetime of yours, you have got all the fruits of the seeds you had planted. Suppose you had planted papaya seeds 
rotten papaya seeds. Example, seeds of pain. That papaya, I'm naming it now pain. So you have planted seeds of pain on the same, at the same time, you have planted seeds of love and you have planted seeds of prosperity. So within six months, that is within the first lifetime, you are getting back all the pain that you have planted. The causes that you have created, you're getting the effects within that lifetime. You remember the mango is after two years. So maybe after two lifetimes, because one year is equivalent to one lifetime. So after two lifetimes, you are getting all the prosperity fruits that you have planted two lifetimes back on the same day. So prosperity is coming to you after two lifetimes. Similarly, the seeds of love that you have planted, you're getting after five lifetimes. In the fifth lifetime, if you are again planting seeds of pain, you will again creating the cause, the effects will come. But all the love that you are experiencing at that point of time is the fruits of love that you had planted five lifetimes before. So whatever is happening in our life today is the effect of all the causes we had created yesterday. Whatever causes we create today will give the effects or fruits tomorrow. So then think deeply. Can you or can you not change your destiny? If you want tomorrow to be as per your wish, what do you have to do? You want the fruits of love. Plant the seeds of love today. If you want the fruits of prosperity, Plant the seeds of prosperity today. Whatever seeds you plant today, whatever causes you create today, you will have the effects tomorrow. There might be some effects of previous lifetimes. You know, if you have planted some seeds of jealousy, they will come back now or maybe in the future. Those are there, but that also you can change. I tell you how. So, what we do, we are accumulating in one lifetime such some negative words, negative thoughts and negative deeds. The dark is all the negatives that we are causes we are creating in this lifetime. Some positive seeds we are planting, good thoughts, good words, good action. So, in this lifetime, we have an accumulation of the good and the bad. So in every lifetime, we are having a mixture of karmas. Some good, some bad, some seeds of love, some seeds of pain, some seeds of uh, maybe betrayal, some seeds of um, you know, help and support we have given to people. So there's a mixture. So it's mixed. So then what happens when you know, uh, it all is getting accumulated? So... This, these are different karmas we have created. The gross, the big ones are all the negatives. These are a little refined and these are all the good. So when we take birth, what happens? These bottles, this bottle is poured upside down, just like an hourglass. If there is a bottle opened here, which has all this mixture of these, or maybe this bottle, it has overturned, it has, it has been turned upside down and it is pouring down the sand, this is your accumulated karmas, which is called sanchita karma. You have accumulated, that is what sanchita means. You've accumulated all the good deeds of all lifetimes, all the bad deeds of all lifetimes in one body. In this lifetime, this is a present lifetime. So in this lifetime, what is happening? It is coming down little by little. So maybe sometimes some gold comes down. The gold is love. Then your life is filled with love. Maybe some dark gray comes down. That is the pain you have caused in people's lives in the past. The causes. So the effects you get pain at that point of time. So little by little, this is called prarabdh karma. Prarabdh karma means entitlement of what you are getting. You are entitled to get happiness at that point of time. You are getting. You are entitled to get pain at that time. That is not true. 
but we can create entitlement how can we create entitlement the more good deeds good thoughts and good words we create the more we are entitling ourselves to receiving those good fruits in the future it may be tomorrow it may be today it may be any time in any lifetime what determines that time period that is called the lag time lag time means the time of maturity a seed when you plant instantly you don't get the fruits right it takes some time for the seed to grow into a plant into a tree and then it gets fruit that is the universal law that is nature's law if you remember children you know when they in school they are taught okay take little cotton in a plate get some um, seeds of uh, you know whatever seeds i told you plant it in that cotton and then you pour water at the day poppy seeds or whatever and you know every day the child comes pours little water and sees what is what is the chain what is the chain and then suddenly one little shoot with a little leaf comes out and the child is so excited wow look 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 it is uh, a plant is growing then the child will be so impatient uh, when will those yellow flowers come when will i get those why is it not coming it has its own lag time its maturity phase its maturity time when a man plants a seed of a baby in a, a woman's womb the baby is not born instantly it takes 9 months to mature and give birth so when we create an entitlement we are entitled to receive definitely you are ensured you will get it but the lag time is what is the determinant when you get it you will get it in this lifetime you will get it in next lifetime you will get it in five lifetimes so when you look at criminals and you say oh they are doing so much crime this person is so bad always they uh, have been jealous and doing this doing that but look at him he is enjoying so much of money he is enjoying luxury how is that possible god is so unjust so unfair no god is not unfair he has planted lots of seeds of prosperity in the past and that is what he is getting now in this life it's matured into those fruits the cause he had created earlier the effects he is getting now the cause that he is creating today of crime he will get the effects we need to understand in depth what it is that is what, what is our life why is our things happening if things are happening can i change my life of course you can change your life so we have in the universe we have a karma bank in that karma bank we are depositing the good and the bad when we are depositing good you are accumulating more and more wealth when you are creating negative karmas you are generating loan for yourself you are as if taking loan what happens when you take loan from the bank you have to repay that loan with interest principal plus interest so when you are doing negative karmas any negative word negative action negative thought you harm somebody hurt somebody that suppose 100 rupees worth of pain you have caused 1000 rupees worth pain will come back to you the loan you have created of 100 rupees you have to pay back Thousand rupees principal plus interest. So the pain that you are going to get back will be worth thousand rupees, not hundred rupees. So when you go through that pain, when you are suffering, you are actually paying off that loan. Maybe in installments, that thousand rupees that you are paying back, you are paying back in ten installments. So you have series of pains coming, you know, at different intervals in your life. Maybe in this lifetime you have had five phases of pain. next lifetime you will have another five phases of pain you are paying back in installment or you can pay back in one shot if you are courageous to pay back in one shot the pain will be severe because you have to earn that thousand and give so much together you have to go through a severe pain but it will be paid off and finished the karmic loan will be over and you can enjoy only the karmic wealth remember one thing the materialistic wealth that we create money uh, savings account in the savings account investments those perish those can just vanish any time any moment but the karmic wealth that you create in the karma bank will be yours forever nobody can steal it 
will be yours forever. Whenever you want, you can actually bring down some good karmas to resolve the problems that you're going through. That is why we need to have a huge accumulation of good karmas, wealth of good karmas. If you have $1 million and if somebody is asking for 1,000, it doesn't matter to you. 1,000, chalo, le jao. I can give 10 people. Achha, I have to give donation of uh, 10,000 rupees for this. Chalo, de do. I have $1 million. So when you can secure yourself with huge wealth of good karmas, you don't need to be insecure about anything in life. Nothing can touch even a strand of your hair because you're secured by your good karma. Yes, maybe there are challenges with karma, but it will not bother you. You can just pull out some wealth and just you can pay off that loan. That's how karma works. So our life is like a field. This is how I understand. So that in that field, we have planted bushes or maybe trees. So suppose in this lifetime, you have a lot of pain and suffering. So there are a lot of bushes. What you can do? You can cut these bushes and try to pull them out and throw them away. Or another thing is, you can plant many, many new seeds in that field. So many plantations you do in that field that after a point of time, when the, when the, you know, the flowers and fruits grow, they grow in abundance. They all overpower all the small little bushes. It overpowers all the negatives, all the uh, swamps. When the trees grow up and starts giving fruit and flourishes, the swamps lose its powers. In the fields, you can see only good, you can see only colored flowers. You cannot see the little weeds that are there. So, when you generate huge good karma constantly, every day you are generating good karmas, good thoughts, good words, good action, constantly you are doing. No matter how many seeds of pain you have planted in the past, these good deeds, good words, and good action will overpower all the wrongs that you have done in the past. It is a wise, intelligent thing to keep on generating good karmas. That is what life is all about. So save good karmas for your children, for yourself. The more good karmas you generate and you create, the real rich is in generating good karmas. Actual wealth lies in the wealth of good karmas. You are truly rich when you have huge balance in your karmic bank account. Be wise, be intelligent and understand what is the right thing to do. The more you help people, the more you donate, the more you serve, the more you are entitled to be helped, to be served, to get from the universe. The more you breathe out, the more you create space in your lungs to breathe in in abundance. That is what karma is all about. So karma says, the deed says, what you sow is what you reap. What you give is what you receive. Life is an echo. When you give something, it comes back to you many, many times. This is the law of reflection. Things do not happen without a cause. Sometimes we do not know what is the cause. So we wonder, why is this thing happening with me? Because you're not realizing the cause, you're just thinking about the effect. So if you really understand, you can change your life. You don't need any astrologer. You don't need anybody else. It is for you to understand. So the golden rule, how to change your life, your destiny, your future. There are two areas of it, two parts of it. In Chinese, we call it the yang and the yin. The yin is the positive. The yang is preventing the negative. So the yang is what you don't do. You, you refrain from not doing. You refrain from hurting people, harming people, doing negative things. You avoid generating negative karma. So you reduce the negative balance on one side. 
and the in is the positive is what you do to generate positive karma so you do good things good words good action helping people donating serving people you're doing good and creating a huge good balance you're reducing the negatives that you have been doing all these years when these goes up it balances and it the, together it will raise your life to a very high level that is the beauty of karma so that's what i will not go any further so i hope uh, you know you have enjoyed today's session um you also taught us something yes. about how can you take the credits from the account what was that about like uh sorry come back again ma'am you told us something about uh, like how can you um, credit your karma like once you've done something yes. good yes yes yes, yes. Yeah, right 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 that is called decree decree means what you that is taught in arhati what uh, you do is that you know the the bank bank balance karmic bank balance is a huge balance you can decree decree means as if you have been giving a karmic atm card so the good karmas that you have generated you can put in the atm card whenever you need a balance you're falling short of money you're running through a crisis financial crisis you put that atm card and you draw in some uh, you know savings from that ba some balance from that account so decreeing means the good karmas that you are generating when you're going through problems suffering you can draw out some of the good karmas from the karmic bank and it will help you to resolve it easily that is called decree so that is meena and hatik that is starting and hatik yeah that is starting and <laughs> but uh, of course you you can always pray to god that god the good karma that i have done please help me to resolve this problem with that so of course god will know what to do the technique is taught uh, later but then you can always pray and you can ask okay but in in this let me tell you one thing be aware when you are praying to god don't pray for that good karma to come back completely always pray in two ways pray one part of the prayer will be god the good karma that i have generated with this help that i have provided to people let it come back to me partly neutralizing my past negative karmas because you have to reduce True. the negative values and mm -hmm. partly to enhance my financial position or whatever you want to so you are taking count of the yin and the yang both you are reducing the negative you are increasing the positive that's all so that of course okay so that was uh, the topic of karma and i'm sure lot of your karmas have been healed by today's session keep generating good karmas heal your life let your life be healed completely permanently on all levels that's what my wish for the day today is for all of you let us pray to the supreme god divine father mother guru master chakrasi mahadev ji meri on the great great ones holy gurus holy masters saints archangels holy angels spiritual helpers to all divine helpers and visible helpers thank you for neutralizing all our negative karmas and blessing us with a healed wholesome life visualize a bright light above your head which is the speck of god within you look into a mirror you deep inside your eyes when you see in the mirror there is a light glowing inside that is the light of the soul salute that atma namaste i the soul i salute the divinity within you i the soul i forgive you for all the mistakes you have done to me on all levels through time and space i humbly seek forgiveness for all the mistakes i have done to you on all levels through time and space may whatever is best for you come to you and to me may you be healed completely and permanently may i be healed completely and permanently om shanti 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 om embrace let both these specks merge with each other i am whole i am one i am one i am one i am one now visualize this bright light going up to the sun and from there you are looking down upon earth you see small specks of light on mother earth these are the light of the souls of all the people on mother earth and all the stars you see in the universe 
all this dust, stardust that you see illuminated are actually the light of the souls of the beings, maybe human beings who have already died. So that is the light of the soul. Soul is eternal. It is not destroyed. So uh, salute to everybody. <clears throat> Atma Namaste to all the sentient beings in all eight directions above and below. In the upper world, that is heaven, middle world, or lower world, hell. In all dimensions, in all parallel universes, in all times, past, present, and future. I, the soul, I salute the divinity within you. I salute the God within you, the Allah within you, the Krishna within you, the Christ within you. I forgive you all for all the mistakes you have done to me on all levels, physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, relationship-wise, or energy-wise. I forgive you all for all the mistakes you have done to me. I humbly seek your forgiveness for all the mistakes I have done to you on all levels you have in this place. Atma Namaste. May both you and I be completely and permanently healed on all levels. I release all of you from all negative karmic connections, hearts, bonds. Atma Namaste. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om. May peace be between you and me. Be in peace. Go in peace. Be in peace. Go in peace. Be in peace. Go in peace. Now cut all the negative karmic cords and connections with them. Cut, cut, cut. Disconnect, catch. Lord God, Lords of Karma, thank you. Now you are, you are entitled to receive forgiveness because you have already given forgiveness to others, right? You have planted the seed. Now you are supposed to get the fruit of the seed. Lords of Karma, thank you for neutralizing all my negative karmas. Thank you for blessing me with a healed, wholesome life. Wholesome on all levels. Thank you for divine healing, divine health, divine protection, divine support, divine guidance, peace and illumination. Thank you in full faith. So be it, so be it, so it is. Om, Amen, Amin, Tathasti. Atma Namaste. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to serve all of you. Have a lovely day.